Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless in the last days the prophet zechariah tells us israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against jerusalem zechariah 12 2 and 3 behold i will make jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against judah and jerusalem and it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. Breaking news. Syrian state media are reporting Israel has conducted a rare daytime strike next to the Iranian embassy in Damascus. Reuters is citing Lebanese security sources saying that the airstrike killed a senior Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps leader, Mohammad Reza Zahedi. In 2010, you should know the U.S. Treasury sanctioned Zahedi, calling him the commander of the IRGC, Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, Quds Force in Lebanon and he played a key role in Iran's support to Hezbollah. So much more we can learn about him. What we want to know now is did Israel hit a target that it wanted to? Trey Yinks has details. Trey, from the ground, what's happening? This is an extremely significant development. According to Syrian state media, Mohammed Zahidi, one of the leaders of Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps, a commander that was involved in the weapon shipments for Iran to groups like Hezbollah and Iran-backed Syrian Shia militias has been targeted in an Israeli airstrike this afternoon in Damascus, Syria. We have seen some of the aftermath video next to the Iranian embassy in Damascus indicating a massive explosion took place. Zahidi, one of the commanders very close to Ismail Khani, the general in charge of all Iranian activity across the Middle East. Now, if this is confirmed by the Iranians, we should be very clear what took place here. According to reports, an Israeli airstrike took out one of the top Iranian generals in the Middle East, targeting a facility linked to the Iranian embassy in Damascus, Syria. This is one of the most significant developments of the conflict so far and it will have repercussions across the Middle East. We are waiting to hear from Iranian officials in Tehran. The Israeli military has not yet commented on the strike. And again, we are sourcing this information to Syrian state media. But the latest information that we have, Mohammed Zahidi, this top Iranian general, appears to have been killed in an Israeli strike this afternoon. You talk about repercussions, consequences. What do you mean? What will that look like? Israeli forces will likely be on high alert throughout the day and into this evening. We should look back at recent history to see the types of responses the Iranians have conducted when their top generals have been targeted in similar strikes. We know that back in 2020, outside of Baghdad's international airport, when the Americans killed top Iranian general Qasem Soleimani, the Iranians fired ballistic missiles toward a U.S. base in western Iraq the Al-Assad Air Base. Now, we don't know if there will be a similar response to this targeted assassination mm -hmm. today in Damascus, but it is an indication that the Israelis will have to remain on high alert, understanding that Iranian proxies in places like southern Lebanon could be further activated as they already have been throughout the conflict over the past so 177 days and possibly respond to this strike. So, Trey, I, I want to get into this a little bit because... You know, we've been hit north of 150, 60, 70 times, our troops in the Middle East. And, and you talk about a move that helps the United States by taking out a commander that reloads with ammunition and does a whole lot of damage for the Quds Force of the Iran Revolutionary Guard. You talk about somebody with that kind of power. Uh, that, no doubt, helps our cause as well. Absolutely. Mohammed Zahedi is the main individual who facilitates the weapon shipments from Tehran to places like southern Lebanon, but more importantly for American troops to places like Syria and Iraq. This is an individual 
who is a top brigadier general in the Iranian military echelon. He is responsible for supplying these Iran-backed Iraqi and Syrian Shia militias with the rockets and weaponry that they are using to target American forces in the Middle East and the same weaponry that is being used by Iran-backed Hezbollah to target Israeli forces in the northern part of this country. So it's a significant development. The targeting is really substantial and symbolic when you look at where the strike took place. Yes. The Iranian embassy compound in Damascus, and when you see some of this aftermath video, when it pans to the left outside it. of the embassy, mm -hmm. you see a portrait of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani that was taken out in that U.S. drone strike in Baghdad back in 2020. You talk about comparing what Joe Biden and his administration have done in retaliation in response to all of the attacks on Americans in the last few months. And you look at something like this done by the Israelis, and you look at what was done to take out Soleimani, who you just so, I mean, it's unbelievable, the imagery of this and how he, a picture of him, sits alongside what was just taken out next to the Iranian embassy. You look at all of that and what's happened under the current president and the loss now, the drifting away of support for Israel, it is mind boggling. And turning to the north, where foreign and Syrian reports say Israel attacked Hezbollah missile depots near Aleppo airport in Syria, killing 38 people and injuring dozens. State media also said simultaneous drone strikes were carried out by insurgent groups. Hezbollah is paying a very heavy price in its cross-border exchanges with Israel in Lebanon and also in Syria. Over the weekend, the Syrian army claimed Israeli airstrikes hit near the international airport in Aleppo, causing material damage. Security sources told Reuters that at least 38 people had been killed. Syrian state media claims that the Israeli strikes coincided with drone attacks by insurgents. Israeli strikes reportedly hit Hezbollah missile depots in Aleppo's southern suburb of Jibreen. Hezbollah confirmed that five of its members were killed in the attack. Closer to the border, a Hezbollah missile targeted the Israeli border town of Margaliot without causing injury or damage. This after the IDF carried out three strikes in the southern village of Taibe. Earlier, an IDF drone targeted a car in Tyre, eliminating the deputy commander of Hezbollah's rocket unit, Ali Naim, in a drone strike. After the latest strikes, Hezbollah announced the names of six more members killed. As we continue to watch the Muslim world unite against Israel, the Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14, the burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. Then behold, at eventide, trouble, and before the morning he is no more. This is the portion of those who plunder us, and the lot of those who rob us. Isaiah 17, 9. In that day, his strong cities will be as a forsaken bow and an uppermost branch, which they left because of the children of Israel, and there will be desolation. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14 tell us Damascus will be destroyed in a single night. Verse 9 suggests it is the children of Israel who caused this desolation, possibly with a nuclear weapon. Jeremiah 49, 34 through 37. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against Elam. In the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the foremost of their might. Against Elam I will bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and scatter them toward all those winds. There shall be no nations where the outcasts of Elam will not go, for I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before those who seek their life. I will bring disaster upon them, my fierce anger, says the Lord, and I will send the sword after them until I have consumed them. In this prophecy, Jeremiah predicts that Iran will be struck at the foremost place of its might, which today could infer an attack upon its nuclear program. One of Iran's most strategic and vulnerable nuclear targets is Bashar nuclear reactor located in the heart of ancient Elam. Jeremiah says that Iran has fiercely angered the Lord and that provokes the Lord to cause a severe disaster inside of Iran. Israel seeks to prevent Iran from becoming a nuclear nation. Perhaps this alludes to a nuclear disaster caused from a strike upon Iran's Bushehr nuclear reactor.
There is a prophecy written by Asaph the seer that many end-time teachers believe has yet to find fulfillment. In this prophecy, a confederation of Muslim nations have taken crafty counsel against the Jewish people in Israel in order to destroy them as we read in Psalm 83, 1-8. Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace and do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult, and those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. For they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, Gabal, Ammon, and Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre, Assyria also has joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. Ezekiel 38, 1-9 The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn you about, and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out, and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great host, all of them with buckler and shield, wielding swords, Persia, Cush, and Put are with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his hordes, Beth Garma from the uttermost parts of the north with all his hordes. Many peoples are with you. Be ready and keep ready, you and all your hosts that are assembled about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be mustered. In the latter years you will go against the land that is restored from war, the land whose people were gathered from many peoples upon the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. Its people were brought out from the peoples and now dwell securely, all of them. You will advance, coming on like a storm, you will be like a cloud covering the land, you and all your hordes, and many peoples with you. These are the modern day nations listed in Ezekiel 38 and 39 who will be mustered in the latter years to attack Israel, Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, Sudan, and Ethiopia. God tells us exactly what will happen to Iran, Russia, Turkey, and the many peoples with you when they attack Israel in Ezekiel 38, 18 through 23, and 39 to 7 and 8. And it will come to pass at the same time, when God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. So that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him into judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. And I will turn thee back, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nation shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Surely it is coming, and it shall be done, says the Lord God. This is the day of which I have spoken. I've been informed by top-ranking military officials that Israel has been unable to launch even a single plane in defense. As I stand here, Fighter planes are exploding in midair. They're crashing and falling to the ground without any explanation. And while no one can seem to give me any reason for why this is happening, I can tell you this. This all-out, unprecedented attempt to destroy Israel appears to be failing. God is the one who fights this battle for Israel. He does it for two reasons. To make his holy name known in the midst of his people Israel, that the nation shall know that he is the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Zechariah 2, 8, and 9. For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoiled for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Israel is precious to Almighty God, the apple of his eye. He is simply saying, You touch my chosen nation Israel, you poke me in the eye. Is Vladimir Putin the infamous Gog of Magog that the prophet Ezekiel warned would come on the scene in the last days and lead a coalition of nations to destroy Israel? 
Or could Gog be Recep Tayyip Erdogan, another dictator who is fast gaining power and dominance in the Middle East? Biblical scholars can't agree if the prophet Ezekiel was talking about a last day's assault on Israel being led by Russia or Turkey. Many popular Bible teachers claim that Gog will come from Russia, while others claim that Ezekiel's prophecy actually points to Turkey. Whether Gog is from Russia or Turkey, both nations are presently being led by undisputed dictators who could each very easily fit the Gog profile. With the chaos and uncertainty growing around the world almost daily, more people than ever should be preparing for the event that will bring about the climax to human history and the restoration of all things, in other words, a new heaven and a new earth the second coming of Christ. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees for not recognizing the signs of his first coming as we read in Matthew 16, 1-3. Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came, and testing him, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. The religious leaders of Jesus' day had full knowledge of the prophecies of the Messiah. Yet these religious leaders ignored the signs and still rejected him. If the religious leaders of Jesus' day missed the signs of Jesus' first coming, how much more important is it for us today to pay close attention to the signs of Jesus' second coming? The many signs heralding Jesus' return were given for our benefit and encouragement, but we must recognize them. We are literally at the doorstep of the seven-year tribulation, also known as the time of Jacob's trouble. And that, in turn, means the rapture could occur at any moment. 1 Thessalonians 4, 15-18 For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain should be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Jesus emphasized the importance of watching for his return. In Mark 13, 35-37, Jesus said this, Watch therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, in the evening, at midnight, at the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning. Thus coming suddenly, he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. Jesus said this in Luke 21, 36, Watch therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Escape is the Greek word ekfugo, which means to flee out. Ekfugo is the compound of two Greek words, ek or ex, which means from the point whence action or motion proceeds, out of place, time, or cause, fiugo, which means to run away, by implication to shun, by analogy to vanish. Luke 21.36 can be translated like this, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to vanish out of place, time, or cause, and to stand before the Son of Man. Luke 21.36 tells us we will vanish out of place, the earth, vanish out of time, to heaven, and vanish out of cause, the seven-year tribulation. Sounds a lot like the rapture, doesn't it? Stay tuned as we watch Bible prophecy unfold right before our very eyes. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, 
we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.